Hi, in this video, I will discuss the experimental procedure and calculations involved in the simple distillation experiment conducted in the mass transfer lab. Simple distillation is the process of separating different components in a liquid mixture based on the differences in their boiling point. In a simple distillation experiment, the feed mixture will be taken in a round bottom flask and it will be heated using a heating mantle. During heating, the temperature of the liquid mixture rises up. When the temperature of the liquid mixture reaches the boiling point of any component in that liquid mixture, that particular component will become vapor. The generated vapors will be rising up and it will be collected separately by condensing this vapor into liquid. While these generated vapors travels, along with this vapor of low boiling component, few moles of other components also will become vapor and travel along with these vapors. It is due to the molecular interaction and uh, collisions between these molecules. Because of this, the distillate will not be 100% pure, it will have few moles of other components also. We can continue the experiment until a specific volume of distillate solution is collected. Once the specific volume of distillate is collected, we can switch off the heating mantle. The condensate collected is called as distillate. The remaining feed solution in the round bottom flask is called as residue. In mass transfer laboratory experiment, the objective of the simple distillation process is to verify the Rayleigh equation experimentally. With respect to distillation process, Rayleigh equation relates the total number of moles of feed and residue in the process with the vapor liquid equilibrium data. In this experiment, the feed mixture is prepared by mixing 150 ml of acetone and 150 ml of water. This feed solution is loaded into a round bottom flask and the heating mantle will be switched on. When the heating mantle is switched on, the vapors start generating. To collect the generated vapors, a condenser with the cold water inlet and outlet is fixed with the outlet of the round bottom flask. Once the generated vapors go through this condenser tube, it will lose its energy. It will exchange its heat energy with the cold water in the shell side in the condenser and it will become liquid. These liquid droplets will be collected in a separate conical flask. We can continue the process until a specific volume of distillate is collected. Once the distillation process is stopped, the remaining solution in the round bottom flask is called as residue. The condensate collected in the separate flask is called as distillate. The total moles in the feed mixture is termed as F. The total moles in the residue is termed as W and XF and XW will be the fraction of acetone in feed and the residue. At the end of the experiment, we will be left out with three solutions. One is the feed mixture. Second is the residue which remains in the round bottom flask and then distillate which is the condensate collected in a separate flask. Now we can move on to the calculations. The verification of Rayleigh equation can be done in three steps. To do that, we need volume fraction and density data and then the VLE XY data for the acetone water mixture. This given data must be plotted as a graph and which will be used during the calculations. To start with, we have three solutions and two graphs. The first step. In this experiment, we have collected 85 ml of distillate, 300 ml of acetone water mixture. The leftover solution that is a residue in the round bottom flask is 205 ml. The first step is to find the density of the mixtures that is feed, distillate and residue. To find the density of the solution, we are going to use specific gravity bottle. Specific gravity bottle of 25 ml is used in this study. The feed mixtures will be filled in the specific gravity bottle and when the Teflon lid is used to close the specific gravity bottle, it will squeeze out the excess solution and it will ensure that 25 ml of solution alone is kept inside the bottle. Now, when we measure the weight of the specific gravity bottle with the solution and the lid, we can get the total weight of the bottle. Then we have to measure the empty weight of the bottle. Once we subtract the empty bottle weight with the total weight of the specific gravity bottle with solution, we can obtain the mass of the mixture. The similar way, we have to calculate the mass of the feed, distillate and residue. 
As the volume of specific gravity bottle is 25 ml, we can fix the volume as 25 for all the three samples. Now the density can be calculated by finding the ratio of mass and volume of the solution. Now the density of the mixture can be calculated by finding the ratio of mass of the mixture and the volume of solution that is 25 ml in this case. Once we find the density of the mixture, the first step is completed. Now the second step is to find the volume fraction using the graph 1. As we already discussed, the density has to be converted to mole fraction. It will be done in two stages. First, the density to be converted to volume fraction using the graph 1. The graph 1 is the graph plotted between volume fraction and density of the acetone water mixture. Once we found the volume fraction using the graph 1, we will move on to converting the volume fraction to mole fraction. This is the data given along with the experiment. To find the volume fraction, this data has to be plotted as a graph. To find the volume fraction, we need to plot this volume fraction data as a graph and from the graph we have to calculate the volume fraction. From the density of the mixture we have to draw a perpendicular line from the point at which it meets the curve draw another horizontal line towards the y axis. The point at which it meets will be the volume fraction. As we calculated for feed we have to repeat the same procedure for finding volume fraction of distillate and residue. Now the first stage in the second step is completed. Now using this volume fraction we have to find the mole fraction. Now we have to convert this volume fraction into mole fraction. This table will be useful for finding mole fraction. Now in the mixture column feed, distillate and residue is listed. The initial volume which has been taken out of the experiment. The volume of mixture which will be the amount of feed we have taken for running the experiment that is 300 ml. Then the distillate volume collected that is 85 ml in this experiment. And the remaining solution left over in the round bottom flask that is 205 ml in this experiment. The volume fraction we just obtained using graph 1. Now let's move on to calculate the mole fraction of acetone. To find the mole fraction of acetone, we have to find the number of moles of acetone in this volume of solution. The number of moles in the volume of solution can be obtained by the formula density into total volume into volume fraction by molecular weight. The density of the acetone is 0.791 gram per cc and the molecular weight of acetone is 58 gram per gram mole. On substituting the respective values in the equation, we can calculate the number of moles in the feed that comes to be 1.43 gram mole. Similarly, we have to find the number of moles of water in the feed mixture. The density of water is 1 gram per cc and the molecular weight of water is 18 gram per gram mole. To find the number of moles of water in the feed mixture, density, total volume, volume fraction and molecular weight is substituted in the formula and it is calculated to be 10.83 gram mole. Now the total number of moles is calculated by summing the moles of acetone and the moles of water in the feed mixture which comes to be 12.26. Now the mole fraction can be found by finding the ratio of number of moles of acetone and the total number of moles in the feed mixture which comes to be 0.12. Similarly, we have to calculate the number of moles of acetone and so the mole fraction of acetone in distillate and residue. Now, the step 1 and step 2 is completed. We are moving on to step 3. The third step is to verify the Rayleigh equation. As we already discussed, the Rayleigh equation relates the total number of moles in feed and residue with the mole fraction of solute in the feed and residue and the vapor liquid equilibrium data. The VLE data for the acetone water mixture is given. To find the right hand side of the equation, we have to plot a graph between x and 1 by y minus x. The x stands for the mole fraction of acetone in the liquid phase and y asterisk stands for the mole fraction of acetone in vapor phase. Once we calculated the values, we can plot it as a graph. To find the right hand side of this equation, we have to find the number of boxes present between xf and xw. Once we count the number of boxes between XF and XW under this curve, we can find whether the Rayleigh equation is verified by this experiment. After plotting the graph and marking the XF and XW vertical lines in the graph, we have to count the number of small boxes under this region. In this particular diagram, the number of boxes when drawn in a graph sheet was comes to be 330 and the scale of axis used will be 0 0.05 per centimeter and the y axis scale was 1 unit per unit centimeter. On calculating the value, it comes to be 0.165. Now we have to verify the left hand side of this equation. The F value and W was 12.26 and 9.84 which is substituted and it comes to be 0.22. 
Now we can see that the left hand side of this equation and the right hand side of the Rayleigh equation is similar. 